Hi people, this is the first lecture of week 9 and my plan is to do uh, three problems here and uh, uh, chapter 7, 11 and 8 these are uh, very uh, relatively simple problem and I'm not going to put any physics into the equation therefore there are no formulas, there are no plots to be generated etc. Those you already know from front to the back, A to Z and therefore uh, I don't repeat in every problem. Now, uh, in doing so, I will be introducing the point, cur point curve joint, point surface joint, and uh, cylindrical joint you already know, but anyway, uh, that's uh, pretty much it. So in uh, the first problem that I'll do is called the ellipse generating mechanism. So basically, we have a base here with two tracks in it and two blocks that travel up and down these tracks. And there's a rock here with two uh, you know, protrusion here is the pins that are going to go into top of these blocks, okay? Uh, as uh, these blocks travel, one of them travels, the other one will follow the other track, and this rod will start turning, and it will generate an ellipse. Uh, if the point A is exactly halfway between B and C, then this is going to be a circle. Otherwise, it's going to be an ellipse. Uh, the second problem that I'm going to be doing is called the robotic arm, and uh, basically it's the uh, the bottom of this this vertical link is going to go along a path here. I've drawn it as a ellipse here, or or a circle. It makes no difference. I'll, let's say let's say an ellipse, and uh, at a constant speed. Uh, one thing you should realize is that although this point at the bottom of the this vertical link goes at a constant speed. Uh, the acceleration is not zero because uh, this speed that we're talking about is a tangential speed. And if, if I call it V, for example, there is always a radial component of acceleration, which is V squared over R. So V may be constant, but R is the local radius of curvature. So over here in the, in the kind of almost a straight segment of it, R is extremely large, okay? And therefore, that radial acceleration is extremely small. On the other hand, the radius of the curvature here at these, at these peaks, the radius of curvature is very small, and therefore, V squared over R is very large. So we have huge accelerations here at these, at these peaks, but then on this uh, more or less straight line type-ish, uh, you know, uh, path, uh, very little acceleration. Uh, now, uh, the last problem that I'm going to do for you is going to be a cam follower. So basically, uh, I'm going to be using a point surface joint. And although I've drawn this uh, thing as a surface, it can also be done, uh, at least in this problem, without uh, having the surface. So I'll show you how. So as the cam turns, it pushes this pin up and down, and this basically this is the the way uh, valves work in an in internal combustion engine. The fuel valve works. Okay, so uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Let's let's get let's get down to business. Just things so file, save management, save as desktop, new folder. Ellipse generator, generator, okay, and uh, I'm going to put the stuff in there. Let me start with the base, ignoring all dimensions, so insert a new part in there, and I'm going to call this thing the base, base. And base. Okay, let's make it. It's a very simple uh, square which is padded. So on that horizontal plane, I will sketch. It doesn't have to be a square, it can be a rectangle actually, but it doesn't matter really. So I'll make it uh, I'll make it a rectangle. How about that? Fine. Okay, exit. Uh, pad it. That's fine. Now on that side, I will sketch a little rectangle 
Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is make sure that I know what the size of this uh, height is. So let me uh, let me make the distance. What I mean by that is uh, I want to know what this size is from uh, here to there. Okay, I'll make it point uh, point five. Maybe just to make sure it's it. Let me see for a second. Yeah, that's good. So basically, you have a situation like this. Okay. All, I know that this is 0. 0.5. Okay, let me actually make this thing a little bit smaller. So exit, and I make a pocket all the way to the end. Last. Now I have to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So why don't I why don't I use actually a circular pattern? If you look, and for the circular pattern, I'm going to be using, uh, uh, let's say. Uh, uh, instances and angular spacing angular spacing i make it uh, uh well let's see now for reference element i can i select the z axis is that axis yes and i don't want to use the entire solid i just want to use that crown and for the angle i want to make it 90 degrees let's see how it looks like yep uh except that this is fine except that uh because this uh, pad, uh, because of the sketch that I had, uh, this sketch, uh, probably what I can do is uh, I make this thing shorter. Exit. Okay, at the end of the day, you have to make something like that. Please do it any way you feel comfortable with. Okay, so we go all the way to the top. I save everything. All right, now let's insert those blocks. So insert, insert, a new part, I'll say block one. These are identical blocks, but I'd rather do it separately. Uh, block one and block one. Same thing down here. Block one. Okay, let's make it. Double click. And uh, <clears throat> why don't I go and uh, on that face, on that face, I will sketch. Okay, where is it? Let me flip the side face so that I can see actually what I'm doing. Um, I draw a rectangle. Like that. It doesn't matter whether it's touching these, uh, both of these edges, both of these sides or not. That's totally irrelevant. So I'm going to make it something like that. It just, it just looks good if it's actually smaller than that. So I will draw a little circle here. Exit. Pad it. Uh, I will make it uh, one because remember, 0. 0.5 was. Uh, this much was 0.5, I made it a little bit taller. Now, I can make exactly the same thing. Let's save everything. Repeat that basically, or I can do a copy paste or uh, other, any other means. Right click, copy, and right here, paste. Now they're gonna be on top of each other, so, uh, to see that you can actually translate it for example translate in y direction you can see they're going to be on top of each other good let's go all the way to the top insert insert a new part that's going to be my rod that link on the top right click properties i'll make it rod and rod okay Good. So uh, <clears throat> actually, the easiest way to do that is go to rod. We want to make it on that face. 
to sketch, project that circle. Okay, you can see that. And then uh, make the rest of it. Let me flip this. Yeah, flip this thing around. Yeah, so you can see it better. So, uh, would, would, should I make it as, uh, yeah, I'll make it as a rectangle or anything else that you like? Yeah, something like that. This is a short, long enough rod. I want it to be a little bit longer. Yeah, why not? And I want this circle to be over here too. So uh, uh, the the different ways of doing it, but uh, one way is to uh, <clears throat> one way is to measure that circle. Let's see what the radius of it is. Radius point one three sixes. Okay, so I go here, and draw another circle here, point one three sixes. Point one three six. Okay, very good. Exit. Now, if I insist on making pins there, I better do a multi pad. Okay, so this is going to be the big one. So, why don't I make that thing point uh, one? These are the holes. I'll make it point uh, point three. And this is the hole. It's supposed to turn into, of course, a, 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 a pin. So you can see that right right there. Okay. Good. That's a, we're pretty much done here. So one other thing I want to do, because later on I want to draw the trace of this point, I'm going to create a point exactly halfway between these two points, which belongs to the rod. So a point uh, between this point and that point. And exactly halfway because later on I want to draw the trace of this okay so we go all the way to the top all the way to the top save it all right let us anchor this uh, this block or the space all right, so I'm going to put uh, this guy, this block, in that uh, slot. So uh, coincidence between, uh, for example, this edge and that edge. Update. Okay, good. And I'm going to make a coincidence between, for example, this face and that face of the wall okay now if i there's nothing to update because it's already there are already a coincidence there so uh if i move this thing so that it ends up on that uh, on that base you feel i mean i feel more comfortable okay <laughs> all right good now let's put this guy in that in that slot so uh, coincidence between for example this edge and that edge, okay. And coincidence between this face. Did I pick it? Sorry, coincidence between this face and that face. Update. There we are. Let me also move it in there. So uh, try and transit in direction W direction X like that. Okay. Now we're going to put these pins inside of those holes. So coincidence between this pin and that hole, and coincidence between that top face and the bottom face. That will make a revolut point. Update. All right. Good. And now that guy 
just coincidence between the axis and the axis because because of the sizes we don't have to do the the, the faces it's already uh, uh, they already they're already flush so this and th that's going to become a cylindrical joint by the way an update okay good so let's check it out uh first of all save everything before we regret now we go then move and manipulate let's do a rotation with this box checked so respect all the constraints so let's just rotate about for example i don't know this maybe this axis this line this line okay so let's check yeah you see i guarantee you that that tip will actually traverse a an ellipse uh, so i'm going to cancel that Good. So let's uh, go ahead and create uh, all the joints. So uh, uh, we go to start. Uh, we can digital mockup, the MU kinematics, get the magic wand out. Uh, new mechanism, mechanism number one, auto create is four joints, two prismatic, one revolute, and one cylindrical. Let's check it. Two prismatic, one revolute, and one cylindrical. And I can take one of these revolutes and go the 0 to 360. 0 to 360. It doesn't matter which one. I can, can I either do the, the revolute one or the cylindrical one. Let's check it out. Let's create a mechanism first. Uh, the mechanism is created, right? Uh, cancel that. Uh, let's check it with the manual uh, command. You can see that. Okay, good. And make a cartoon. Animation, another way of saying cartoon. Move this thing, insert, rewind anything but one, and play it continuously. So you will see that it actually gives you something like that. The next thing I want to do is to show you actually that point uh, follows a trace, a, a, a trace that is a, an ellipse. So I'm going to stop this, rewind. Because we created our simulation. That's a requirement if you're going to compile it and then get the trace. So we go here, compile it. Uh, now we don't want we don't want speed of one. Speed of one will not give you anything. They generate it. Good, and then we put a trace. Uh, so that point, that point. And the reference reference product is actually product one. It's already picked. So we say okay. It's going to be a new point, new. Uh, it's going to be a new part. So save this thing. File, save management. Here's the trace. Save as in that folder. Trace one. Say okay. Incidentally, notice that uh, when you go here, file save management, uh, because I did a copy and paste, this is, uh, hang in there, so which one is that? Let me, let me just, yeah, because I made a copy and paste, there's only one block that shows. If I had actually made a block, it would have been a block number two. Okay, just, just be aware of that. Good, so let me close this, go here, insert existing component in there, and it's the trace, we say okay, there we are, and this is an ellipse, uh, I told you the condition that you need for it to be a circle in case you want it, and if you play it, if you do the replay, you see that it actually goes on that ellipse. That point travels on that ellipse. I didn't put any physics into it because you already know how to do that. We just leave it the way it is. So uh, that is done. Okay, let me just get rid of it. Okay, we will now go and do this problem. And this is called, a, I'll call it a robotic arm. Basically, it's made of uh, four pieces. 
there is this base right here. There's a base. There is a link one, link two, and link three. And uh, this, the bottom of link three actually traverses a curve in space, which incidentally can be a separate part, or I can make it as part of the space. Uh, that's how I'm going to do that. Okay. So you want to see uh, the motion of this uh, robotic arm now. Notice that uh, if we can think about this thing as welding a piece, this is a robot that's welding this uh, this boundary between two pieces, for example. Usually the weld speed should be uh, relatively constant. So uh, this point, as if you want to put the physics into it, it would be constant velocity or speed along that path. But you know where the acceleration is maximum. Acceleration will be maximum here and there. And places where the curvature is, is high, because remember the formula for uh, uh, normal acceleration is V squared, a constant divided by the radius of the curvature. So the acceleration is going to be relatively flat here, very you know, not not uh, 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 not very large, but around these bends, there's going to be a big acceleration, okay, uh, for a given velocity. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We go here. Uh, let me start with the product file. I'm going to save it right away. So, file, save management, save as, one level up. A new folder, robotic arm. Okay. Good. Let's do the base first. So uh, we're going to go to uh, insert. Let me go to assembly design. I feel more comfortable. I recognize the icons here. So insert a new part. In there, I'll call it the base. Right click properties, base and base, base and base. Okay, let's make it. You do it any way you want, it should look like what I showed you. Okay, so on that flat plate, I will sketch. I'm gonna draw a rectangle, centered rectangle actually. I like it better. So like that, then I'm going to draw a little circle there, and another circle, you'll see why. This is how I'm going to do that, because I'm going to use multi-pad. You do it any way you want. Okay, so I'll do a multi-pad. It says there are uh, three curves here. This is the rectangle, so let me pad it by uh, maybe 0.5. This is the... This is going to be the cur curve or responsible for that portion. So let me make that thing uh, maybe two. We can change it if we don't like it. Maybe let me make it uh, four. Okay. And this is the little tip on the at the end. Okay. So let me make that thing. Actually, let me make this thing five. And let me make this thing uh, maybe uh, five point five. Let's see how it looks like. Oh, uh, not, I, I don't think I put the right number in there. Let's go ahead. Double click on multipath. This last one. Uh, okay, so this is 5.5 .5 is there. Let me make it 6. Oh, wait a minute. I'm picking the wrong one. Okay, this one, this one, I'll make it 5. This one, I make it. 5.5. That's what I wanted to do. There. Okay. Good. Now, while I'm here in this uh, base, I will actually make a slanted plane. Okay. So I'll make a plane. There are different ways of doing it. I can say do it with angle and normal to a plane. Rotation axis is going to be this, for example. The reference reference plane is going to be that. This is zero angle. So if I make the angle bigger, look, it's tilting. You can see that at the very bottom. You see that? Right there. It's tilting. You can see that? Right there. And we say, okay. So on that plane, I will sketch. 
basically uh, you know some spline or you can draw an ellipse whichever you want or a circle it really doesn't matter i'll make an ellipse how about that exit so uh, uh the end of that vertical pin is going to traverse this except that uh, i want to make this thing uh, a little bit further back like that and i want to make it bigger too okay so you have to dimension it of course to to make it bigger uh let me make this thing six okay that's not really a critical matter so you can you can change it when you see there is a need you can specify the major and the minor of the ax uh, axis of the ellipse and i don't want to waste any time on that right now so uh Please make sure you, you can go ahead and, if you want, you can go ahead and do it. So, let's go all the, all the way on the top. So, we're going to say insert a new part in there. And I'm going to call it link one. Right click, right click properties, link one, link one, link one. Let's make it. So on a convenient plane, on that plane, I use a sketch. Why don't I project that circle? There we are. I don't think I did it. There we are. And now I made, I will make my link. So uh, why don't I make it with an elongated hole? And I'll fix it. there okay and then i'll make another circle over here exit okay pad it it's too much point two yeah okay that's good all right we go we go there we insert link two so insert a new part link two Link to double click on a convenient plane on that vertical plane. I use a sketch. Why don't I project that circle? And make another elongated hole. uh okay and a little circle here because that's going to be really where the vertical link is going to go exit okay so uh we'll do a, we'll do a multi-pad on that sketch so this is the the big big periphery so make it 0.5 this is oops uh, 0.2 i think that's what i wanted 0.2 0.2 and this one is the little little circle here i want a zero i want a hole and this is the guy on that side so i'll make it uh, how about making it the uh, one hmm. not one <laughs> point uh, maybe point four okay that that's bad so hopefully this uh, thing can actually reach these ends it may or may not depending on what that length is so that's being the case i'm going to actually make this thing a little bit longer so let me go to this uh to this uh multi-pad double click let me see where is it yeah so let me uh move this thing Okay, exit. There we are. Okay, so that takes care of this. Uh, then we need the vertical piece. So all the way to the top, all the way to the top, insert new part in there. No. 
right click properties vertical vertical component I'll call it vertical vertical and vertical here double click so uh, on that face I will sketch project that circle exit and pad it in both directions let's see maybe a little bit more I think I'll I'll take care of it you can travel enough enough yeah, fine, fine. Now, while we're here, I create a point at the bottom of this uh, vertical uh, vertical member. So, a point at the center of a circle, that circle creates a point there. And I will also go here and create a point on that uh, curve. So, where was that curve? Double click on it, it goes into. Uh, it was in the base, right? So uh, actually, I don't have to go to the. I have to go to that part. Am I in that part right now? Yeah, I'm in that part, and I create a point on a curve. On a curve. So, for example, this. It doesn't matter where. I just created a point which is right here. You can see that. Okay. Good. So all the way to the top. Save everything. Okay. Let's go and base, uh, fix the space. So anchor the base, which automatically, by the way, anchors this uh, ellipse in it. Now, uh, let me move these things apart so that we can do things properly. So up, okay, down, <laughs> say okay. So coincidence between this axis and that axis, already they are coincident. Coincidence more contact between this plane and that kind of bottom plane. I remember it doesn't matter bottom or top because you can flip the arrows and it puts in the right orientation. Good, good. Now let's put this uh, this pin inside of that hole. So coincidence between this pin that coincidence between this plane. And that plane. Okay, and if it doesn't look good, we're going to flip the arrows. So, does it look good? Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so, we go here. Flip. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to act coincidence between this axis and that axis. So, coincidence between the axis of the vertical coincidence between the axis of the vertical member and and coincidence of this side surface which is actually you know coaxial with that hole uh, but if you if it's bothering you just put the cursor here use the arrows to march through it there okay do it any way you want. This is going to make a cylindrical joint and it's going to be a problem. You'll see why. Because once I put this, this point on that curve, on that location, this can still spin and that is going to cause a problem. So I have to go and, go and take away that spinning motion, something that you're familiar with when we did the single cylinder engine, that pin inside of that was spinning but for now i will leave it the way it is because i want to show you that uh, it's going to cause a problem so uh, now let's put this point on that uh, on that location so coincidence between this point and that point update there we are now if we tried if we tried the if we tried the uh, manipulate the toolbar with this box check and for example rotate it about uh, this axis things are going to look good except that 
Okay, so we go to this manipulate toolbar. Make sure that uh, uh, make sure that uh, uh, this box is checked so that the constraints are respected. So I'm going to do a, a rotation about this, and I'm going to grab that link one and move it. Oh, okay. So here's his issue. <laughs> the, the, the one problem is that because I made this thing because I made this thing uh, coincidence like this, I made it a coincidence with the two points. Uh, they're kind of stuck together, okay? Yeah, they're kind of stuck together. And uh, uh, let me let me delete this. Let me delete this guy. Let me delete this guy because this makes a, the two pieces stick together. And that means that this whole thing is never going to move. So we say, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete that. I brought it down, put it on the curve, because later on, when I do want to do a point curve joint, uh, I need to have the point on the curve. So uh, let me go ahead to uh, Digital Mockup, DMU Kinematics, get the magic wand out, a new mechanism, auto create. Say okay. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a revolute here, a revolute here, a cylindrical there. Okay, revolute, revolute, cylindrical. So let me do my point curve joint. Here's the point curve joint. First the curve, here's the curve, then the point. Now make sure you there are two points sitting on top of each other. Make sure you take the point for at the bottom of that uh, at the bottom of that uh, uh, what is that uh, link vertical link right vertical link the vertical link select this and you say okay now first of all notice that the number of degrees of freedom is two and the reason is two is that this cylindrical joint can spin about that axis this should not be cylindrical this should be actually a prismatic joint now uh let, let me remind you you can either delete this, delete this mechanism, go and fix it, or delete that cylindrical one and fix it, and let me go. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing some extra work, I'm going to delete this mechanism, okay? So let me go ahead, delete this. Don't delete the children. Okay. Go here. Now, we... Uh, what we need to do is to make sure a vertical axis, vert, sorry, vertical plane, a vertical plane of this this uh, vertical line, vertical link, keeps the same angle as a vertical plane of this link too. So how do we do that? We are we go to assembly design, create an angle constraint, angle constraint between for example the let's say the yz plane of the vertical plane and the yz plane of link 2 keep that angle the same whatever it is right now it's 97 degrees great that will turn this thing into a prismatic joint later on so let's go ahead uh, let's go back let's go back to digital markup okay. close all of these we go back to the digital markup, DMU kinematics. Oh, no, not fitting, DMU fitting. DMU kinematics, that's what I meant. Right there. Get the magic wand out. New mechanism. Mechanism one, auto create. The only difference is that that cylindrical joint now becomes a prismatic joint. Let's check it. Prismatic joint, right there. Okay. Now, uh, let's do our point curve joint. So here's the point, uh, this is slight curve, this is a point curve. Curve one is that curve. Point is the point at the bottom of that vertical link. Now, if you're having a hard time picking it here because the things are sitting on top of each other, you go to vertical link. There's the point at the bottom of it. You say, okay, notice that the degree of freedom becomes one. Great. Now, we, we this point curve joint 
can be angle driven. Let's make it, uh, sorry, length driven, not angle driven, length driven. I say, okay, mechanism can be simulated. And uh, let's do that manually, first of all, make sure it's working. Yeah, this is zero position. Okay, that was zero position. Let's create a simulation. All the way to the end, insert, rewind, and anything but one, and make it go continuously. And there we are. Now you can put the physics into it. For example, you can say, what is the velocity of this? You know how to do f of x. Okay, specify this uh, formula for this. And then you can plot the acceleration. You can plot uh, other things. Uh, remember, these two have these two uh, endpoints, these two vertices of the ellipse have the previous acceleration for a constant speed. Okay, so that takes care of this. And uh, let me close that. Reset, say OK, save everything. And now we still have time. I can go to my very last problem, which is actually that guy. Just a can follow problem. Basically, we have uh, two, uh, two parts a base, a cam, and this uh, follower. OK, so uh, as the cam turns, the bottom of this uh, follower stays on that surface okay and then we can create a point curve joint now, i'm not going to bother making any dimensions so let's go ahead and jump into the thing so uh, a product file immediately save it file save management save as one level up Desktop, new folder, cam follower. Follower. Okay, so uh, let me go to assembly design. Let's make the wall first. So uh, insert a new part in there. I'm going to call this thing the wall, right click properties, wall, and wall. Make it on a convenient plane, on that vertical plane, I will sketch something that looks like that wall. So maybe a profile like this, inverted L. Exit, pad it, okay, that's fine. On that top face, I will sketch a circle. Where am I? A circle. Okay, exit, pocket, there we are, okay. So we go all the way, oh, oh yeah, on that side, back to here, I need a hole here where the cam is gonna go. So on that face, I will sketch a circle. Try it again. I'm trying to make it centered, although it's not necessary. Exit, another pocket. Good. All the way to the top. Save everything. Insert, insert a new part. Oh, insert a new part in there. No, call it uh, ca uh, the cam, right? Properties, cam, and cam. Let's make it. Let's go there on that plane. I will sketch why don't I project that circle and let's do the rest of the cam. The rest of the cam, I'm going to draw it like this. And we'll clean it up. 
Okay, there's a lot of cleaning up here. <laughs> First of all, I want uh, this circle and that circle to be concentric. It just looks nicer. There we are. I want uh, uh, this and that to be tangent to each other. Again, it just looks nicer. Okay, same thing down here. This guy and this guy. Tangent. Very good. And I think this is, I want to make it shorter, right there. So there's going to be my can. Exit. Do a multi pad. So this is going to be the big boundary. So let's make that thing maybe a one. See how it looks like. And this other one, I'm going to make it a, a one and a half, or maybe two. That's going to be my pin. So all the way to the top. All the way to the top. Save everything. Let's do that pin. So insert a new part. I'm going to make it a very, okay, in, a new part. Yeah. I'm going to call it, I didn't mean the pin, I meant the follower. Right click properties, follower. And follower. Okay. Let's make it. On that face, I will sketch. Let me fit it. Project that circle. Yeah, project that circle. Oh, <laughs> oh wait a minute. what did I do here? Uh, on that face, <laughs> I want to sketch. Project that circle. Good. Uh, exit. Pad it. Okay, and if you insist, you can have a little circle on the top. I don't insist, but <laughs> I want to have it. Yeah, it looks good. Exit, add it, Ooh. point two. Yeah, that's good better okay i will also uh, create a i will also create a point at the bottom of this so i'm going to do a point center of that circle i say okay and uh, this looks too ugly too too long let's make it less than that uh, maybe point uh, three yeah Whoa, what did I do? Oh, that was the, I know what happened. That was the multi, oh, let's undo this. Okay, that was a multi pad actually. Uh, no, no, it wasn't multi pad. It was uh, this guy, right? Yeah, this guy. Uh, point, not point three, maybe three. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's nicer. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the problem. Now, in the book, I have extracted these four surfaces, these four faces. I don't think it's necessary, so I'll do it for you without extracting uh, those, those surfaces, okay? So let's go ahead and actually anchor, fix the, the, the base. And then coincidence between this axis and that axis and coincidence between this plane and that plane update uh, except that the orientation those arrows must be flipped okay good good see it's coming from that other end 
Good. Now, let me move this thing around, rotate this thing a little bit. Good. I want to bring this point and put it on that face. Also, so we say coincidence between this point and that face, update, bring it down. The only thing is that this is not, uh, you know, long enough. So maybe this looks ugly. <laughs> where, where did I make uh, this thing was in multipad for? Either I can move the, I can move that hole this way to the left, or I can make this thing fatter. So let me make this thing fatter. That was the cam, right? It was the cam. Yeah, cam, multipad, and it was this right so let me make it two An overkill <laughs> go all the way to the top update oh uh okay if i'm doing this thing two the other guy must be bigger than two what other guy that other guy so that should be maybe three okay all the way to the top update yep <laughs> okay good good oh yeah i have to make these uh, coincidence to coincidence now here is situation this if i make it coincidence coincidence with that this axis and that axis that will give that will lead into a cylindrical joint and the problem is that with the cylindrical joint that can rotate so if I'm going to do that, I have to take that spinning motion away, just like the previous example, by making an angle constraint to turn it into prismatic joint. Let me do that. Coincidence between this line and that axis, and angle constraint between a vertical plane of this, uh, what did I call this thing, this follower, vertical plane, for example, YZ, and vertical plane of the wall that will turn in turn it into a prismatic joint and won't spin anymore hopefully this is still on that i'm not sure if it's still yeah it is still on that okay, good let's check it out let's check it out so uh, click on the move toolbar make sure that this box is checked on the manipulate let's rotate the cam about this axis let's see if it works see that let me move it away oh yeah you see that now you might say uh wait a minute what's going on uh don't worry about it it's, it is moving on that we'll we'll fix it later on okay good so now we're going to go to digital mockup dmu kinematic get the magic wand out New mechanism, auto create, say OK. There will be one prismatic, one revolute, and who knows, one more thing, maybe one more thing. One prismatic, one revolute. And now I want to do a point surface join. So look here in these, you see right there, it says point surface. The surface is this, and the point is that. I'll say OK. And now the degree of freedom is 1. And let's see if that revolute, we can make it angle driven. 0 to 360. OK, mechanism can be simulated. Now I'm hoping that this goes all the way around. If not, we may need to go and extract those faces. Eh, it's OK. That, that's good. That's good. It's good. Uh, so you don't really need those surfaces if you're careful and be very careful here. Let's do let's do a, a simulation a mechanism number one. Drag this thing all the way to the end. Insert, rewind, and change it to anything but one, and make it turn continuously. Let me move this thing down here so that you can see better. That's the way it's supposed to be. Correct. And I did it without actually extracting the surfaces. Now you can put some physics into it, give the RPM of the the, uh, the cam, and then find out what the acceleration of the pin is, and so this follower is, etc. 
And uh, that takes care of this problem.